Hello everybody, welcome to Wine World TV, the best wine show anywhere. I'm your host, Mark Fusco. Now before we get started, make sure you're smashing that like button and subscribing to the channel. Every like and subscription helps build the channel even better. Spread the word to your friends about the best wine show anywhere. Well, we are in the final stretch of free samples I got during the summer of 2021. Today is the first of three wines from Rias Baishas. I've reviewed several wines from Rias Baishas in the past, just not the ones in this series. Let's get a big bit of background about Rias Baishas. It is in a region of Spain called Galicia. This is that bit of Spain in the northwest that sits just on top of Portugal. It is best known for white wines made from Alvarino. South of here, it's known as Alvarino, and it is one of the grapes used to make Vino Verde. Now, winemaking has been going on here since the Romans came around 19 BC. Not sure exactly what year, but it's believed that the Romans did what they always did and brought winemaking to everywhere they conquered. So now fast forward to the 12th century and the Cistercian monks arrived from France. Now with the discovery of the new world and increased trade, winemaking grows during the 14th and 15th century. In the 19th century, they get hit with a few whammies, uh, trade wars, export bans, phylloxera, you know, that tour of Europe it did. And in the early 20th century, when the vines were, be were being replanted, Alborino became the dominant grape variety. Now, there's a couple theories about the origin of Alborino. It's possibly from somewhere in Central Europe. Either the Germanic peoples brought it in the 5th century, or the Cistercian monks did it, uh, did, brought it in the 12th century. There's also a theory that it's actually a native grape. So depending on what source you're looking at, it's either really the Cistercian theory or it's the native grape theory that's being used as the origin story. Now in Rias Baishas, there are several classifications of wines that can be made. So you have just regular old Rias Baishas. It's essentially a white blend. Then you have Rias Baishas Albarino, a variety specific wine that must be 100% Albarino. Uh, the grapes can be sourced from any subzone, though. You have three subzone designations. Each of these has a specific regulation as to what grapes can be used and what percentages. You have Rias Baixas Valdosanes, Rias Baixas Con Condado Dote, and then Rias Baixas O Rosal. Then you have Rias Baixas Barica. Those are wines aged in oak. They can be red or white. Rias Baixas Tinto, or red wine, is less than 1% of all production. And then Rias Baixas Espumoso is sparkling wine that's limited production too. In addition to Val Sanes, Condado Dote, and Orosal, you have Ribera de Ula and Sotomayor. While the last two are Dios, or Denominación de Oregon, or Origen, the official Rias Baixas website doesn't list them as types of wine. Ribera de, de Ula follows the same standards as Val Sanes, according to the official government document. Sotomayor doesn't have any restrictions listed in the regulations, so it can be white or red, I guess. Not sure how rare a red Sotomayor is. There are a total of 14 red and white grapes that are allowed for re-spicious wines. I'm not going to list them all. There are six white and eight red. Albarino makes up 96% of all plantings in the region. Red wines, like I said, make up less than 1% of the production. Now, we'll focus on the most planted white varieties. You have Albarino, Loreira, and Chejedora. Now, all of these grapes can be used in Vino Verde across the board in Portugal. As you've seen, the Rias Baixas region is right on the Atlantic Ocean. This means a higher humidity and rainfall. These can spell disaster when it comes to disease pressure. To combat that, the vines are trained in what is called the pergola or pergola system as a way to allow more airflow to help keep the grapes dry. All grapes are hand harvested in the region too. Now I'll mention a couple winemaking techniques real quick. Malolactic fermentation isn't widely used in order to preserve the freshness of the wines. It can be found, however. Lees contact, uh, however, is more common. This enhances the flavors and aromas. It can also provide a roundness to the wine. Mallow can also do this, but it softens the wine and can change the flavor profile. Now, you'll notice a seal on these bottles too, right here. 
Uh, in actuality, all Spanish wines that carry a DO will have these seals. They are an inspection seal to indicate that the wines have met the requirements for each particular DO. Okay, so what about the Gran Bazan winery? Uh, it was founded in 1981 in the Val de Salnes. They farm about 17 hectares of Albariño. The Val de Salnes is the coldest and wettest of the five subregions of Rias Baixas. Soils at uh, Gran Bazan are based on granites with alluvial topsoil. Now, they are considered a pioneering winery in the area. They can be considered one of the wineries that sets the standard when it comes to Albariño. Trust me, everyone I showed this to was like, ooh, I'm like, yeah. While they only have 17 total hectares of vineyards, they do, have, they do supplement their estate fruit with long-term contracts with sh small holders in the area in an effort to limit their production. They believe in sustainability, biodiversity, and organic farming. Okay, so here are the stats for the wine. The 2020 Gran Bazan Etica Verde suggested retail price is $19. It's in Rio Spicious and it's the Val de Salnes uh, subregion. 100% Albariño. Granitic soil, hand harvested, destemmed. They also have least contact for approximately four to five months in stainless. It is vegan, so no animal products are used in the production of the wine. This almost always refers to what is used to fine the wine or remove the larger coarse particles in a wine after fermentation. Some fining agents are derived from animals. I believe all their wines are vegan. The alcohol is 13.5%. The total acidity is 7.5 grams per liter. The pH is 3.43. The residual sugar is 2.1 grams per liter. The VA, or volatile acidity, which is not a stat you see very often, is 0.36 grams per liter. And the production is 16,600 cases. I do appreciate that the winery is putting that in there for us. All right, so let's get into the wine. You excited about this one? I am. Seriously, I showed people this wine, and not a ton of people, but because I didn't give everybody a preview of what I'm doing. But I showed some people what I was what I what I was getting, and when I had it, and they were like, "Oh yeah." And it's not expensive too. All right. That's one of the great things about Albarino is it can be a really good value play when it comes to white wines. All right. So I got all that little gas in there. So let's let's get a little rinsey rinse of the of the mouth. So, I mean, it's a lighter straw color, uh, typical, you know, of a, of a, a wine like this. Um, there is, I think there's a little bit extra carbonation in here, um, actual carbonation in the wine. I know Vino Verde, you'll see it. Albarino, I'm not entirely certain that's always in there, but you know, the, the Corvin of course introduces, you know, gas in there. So I get some bubbles. But uh, now that most of the bubbles have died down, I can really see the color there. So yeah, it's like of a almost a medium, almost a medium. But I call it a medium minus, really, um, yellow color. There isn't a ton of green on here, but there's a little bit of green on there. And uh, yeah, let's uh, let's check it out. So really highly aromatic. Um, so it really jumps out of the glass. It's you know definitely young smelling, like it's supposed to. You get um, really this really good, great combination of like orange and flowers. Orange, peach, really fresh in nature. You get some orange blossom, some white flower. That's, you know, flower, floral especially is a, um, is one of the things you'll get from Albarino. You also can get it from Viognier and Tarantes. They're called uh, terpenes. I'm gonna stick my nose in here. Now I'm looking for a little bit of salinity because that's usually what you get in an Albarino. I don't necessarily get it on the nose. But I do get that ripeness of fruit. I mean, it's a freshness of fruit, not say like super ripe. Yeah, it's in that in that citrus category, not like not lemon and lime, but of of an orange and and then tree fruit nature, like like um, uh, stone fruit, like peach. A little nectarine on this. I don't really smell the lees contact on here. I do have sometimes a hard time catching lees contact. Um, ways to describe it sometimes are like a stale beer. Um, I use pasta water um, a lot of times. I get that usually from Pinot Grigio. Um, other ways to describe lees is um, you may get a, a bakery type of thing going on, uh, whether it's like brioche or croissant, 
you know, sourdough bread. Not normally sourdough, but you get like a bread quality. I don't really get that, but let's let's get on the palate and check it out. This is tasty. So those fruits are, are a little more tart on the palate than they were on the nose, but you get this really great combination of orange and peach, nectarine, um, a little tropical fruit, and the floral. Um, there's also a little bit of, it's a little bit of soap, a little bit of hand soap going on here. I usually get that from Toronto, so if I was doing this as a blind, I might be a little confused as to where to take this, but the hand soap is not a lot. It's not like the lavender type of thing. Like Toronto, they get more of a lavender thing rather than just like generic white flowers, or, um, but I'm getting more of the white floral here. Um, the acidity is pretty high. Um, you can really feel the acidity. Uh, I don't really feel the alcohol. I'm going to double check. 13.5, yeah. Um, but 7.5 grams, 3.43 pH. You know, that's that's not super low, but this is definitely a higher acid wine. I mean, I'm really still salivating. This wine is super refreshing. Like, I know by the time you're watching this, is not summertime, and but it's August right now when I'm recording all these things. So, but with that said, so if you're watching this probably in like, I don't know, December, uh, maybe January. I, I don't know when this episode is actually going to be out. Um, it still is a good wine year round because you have so much you can pair with it that it doesn't have to be as summery and fresh. However, if you're watching this and it's a summertime or spring or fall, you can totally do that with salads and fruit and things like that, uh, chicken dishes. But I mean... You've got some, you've got some body to this. Like Albarino, a lot of times we can sit, we think of like us in the industry, think of as somewhat of a neutral variety along with Gruner Veltliner and Pinot Grigio from Italy. So we have this like Bermuda triangle of grapes that we, we struggle with sometimes. This one has more flavor to it. It's, I mean, it's really, it's really good. So this has, this can stand up a little bit more to some heftier dishes. I mean, I'm not going to say you're going to put this with like with like steak or anything like that, but you can have like say a pork, uh, a pork dish with maybe like an orange sauce or sweet and sour sauce. You could totally do this with Asian food uh, or like say Chinese, you know, your American Chinese food, like, you know, General Tso's chicken, orange chicken. You could even probably do sesame chicken with this. Um, it might be a little much for the wine. It might be a little overpowering, but you have like some pork, some chicken, um, obviously fish you can put this with. So if you got a salmon, it can stand up to that. Uh, tuna might be a little meaty, but you can say some type of white fish. You know, obviously you can do that. So it doesn't have to be a summertime uh, thing, but you can definitely uh, definitely enjoy this. Yeah, this is really, really tasty. Well, you know, that's going to do it for the wine. And if you enjoy what I'm doing here, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe. And then tell all your friends. And until next time, have some Albarino. <laughs>